Hi everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing good. It's Bible Magic Maven. And uh, I am on research duty right now tonight. So see this lady right here? This lady right here. Her name is Nicole Hannah Jones. And she is in charge of a project called the 1619 Project. Which I am just elated to find out about okay so uh, what it is is all about the founding of the Americas and the role that get this King James Stewart had in it now she doesn't mention King James Stewart but I kind of put some things together and realized that 1619 when some 20 to 30 slaves came here or well, those they call enslaved the enslaved Africans came here there was a lot that our once and future king as he's called had to do with that um, so I'm gonna share and you guys just brace yourself all right i'm looking forward to it let's go In a special new issue, the New York Times Magazine is launching a series called The 1619 Project. It marks the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in the colony of Virginia. The series examines the ways the legacy of slavery continues to shape this country. The Times says the project aims to reframe American history and place the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the very center of the story we tell ourselves about who we are. The journalist behind the project is New York Times Magazine domestic correspondent Nicole Hannah-Jones. Nicole, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Can you tell us about the genesis of this project? How do, where, where did you come up with the idea? Sure. So I've been thinking about the year 1619 since I was in high school yeah. and I came across that date in a book called uh, Before the Mayflower. And I just was struck by how uh, people of African descent had been here that long and I never knew that date and never heard about it. Right. So as the anniversary was approaching uh, the 400th year, I thought that this was a time to actually assess uh, what has that legacy been and to bring this year 1619 to most American households where it was probably going to pass without them knowing about it. You say 1619 is as important as 1776. Yes. Um, our decision to buy that first group of 20 to 30 Africans would influence almost everything that would follow after. I think it is foundational. It is as foundational to who we became as a country as our decision in 1776 to break off from the British. You say black Americans are the most American of all and our true founding fathers. Can you walk us through from that first ship to today how we're still seeing the signs? Yeah, so when you think about the fact that when Thomas Jefferson is writing the Declaration and laying out these uh, words for liberation, that you know, all, all men, men are created, created equal, equal. Yes. and yes. born with inalienable rights. And while he's writing that, he owns 130 human beings who are in absolute bondage. And in fact, his brother-in-law is sitting there with him, enslaved to help keep him comfortable. What that means is those ideals were not true when they were written, but black Americans took those ideals literally. And black Americans have really fought. Um, you can look at what happens after Reconstruction. You can look at the abolitionist movement. You can look at the civil rights movement. Black people have fought to make those ideals real. Perfecting democracy. Absolutely. I can just say this. I was so embarrassed as a person of color that I had never heard of 1619 until I read your essay, page 16, when you first talk about it. And I just thought, how do we not know this? And I'm not the only one. There was only one person in the room, Betty over there, who went to Harvard. <laughs> she, she knew about you and she knew all about this project and knew all about the state. But you said it's time to stop hiding from our sins and confront the truth. What do you mean? What I mean is... And how do we not know about this, Nicole? We don't know about 1619 the same way that we don't learn very much about slavery. It is shameful. No one wants to talk about their sins or the worst moments. And um, slavery gives contradiction to our entire creation story of the United States. And so we've tried to push it aside. We've tried to make it marginal. And in doing that, we've marginalized the 40 million descendants of the enslaved as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do with this project is force us to confront the truth and then maybe we can actually start to, to move past slavery and become the country um, that was written in our ideals in the Constitution and the Declaration. It's an effort to reframe American history, yeah. but some critics have said it's, it's an effort to delegitimize American history. Uh, from the Cato Institute, uh, Illa Shapiro tweeted, uh, it's a project intended to delegitimize mankind's grandest experiment in human liberty. Is it divisive in that way? 
I mean, what's amazing about that is people are not arguing the facts. So what they're basically arguing is that we should only talk about certain facts. We should talk about uh, the good part of Thomas Jefferson, but not about the fact that he was uh, an enslaver. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that history is history, and we have to tell the truth. Um, no, it's not delegitimizing, de because the whole point of the, argue, of the article is that black Americans have used those founding words to actually bring us closer to the democracy that the founders envisioned. Is and that is the most patriotic of things. Sorry. Uh, you, you can take us, the thing that's so amazing about this that makes me so proud, you can look about at anything that's happening, just about anything that's happening in the world today and tie it to slavery. You look at the highways in Atlanta, you look at the naming of Wall Street, you look at sugar that we eat. But the thing that stuck out to me was health care, that you can, tie, you can tie health care to slavery. How? Absolutely. So there's a piece in there about why we're the only Western industrialized country that doesn't have universal health care. And it starts with opposition to universal health care that occurs um, right after slavery when the Freedmen's Bureau was trying to offer free health care to the formerly enslaved. And there was white opposition to that. Um, and so even today, you see with polling that white Americans will reject social programs if they think large numbers of black people will benefit from them. And so uh, the, the harms of slavery have not been contained because there are millions of white Americans Americans, there are millions of Latinos and Asian and black Americans who don't have health care, who can't get insurance because of slavery. You say don't look at black people as a problem, look at black people as a solution. Yes. Uh, from the beginning, there, there have been, you know, thousands of pages dedicated to saying that black people are, as Abraham Lincoln said, a troublesome presence in our democracy. But really, what uh, we're arguing with this project is black Americans have been the perfectors of this democracy, and that if we ever got to the point we would stop seeing us as a problem, we would actually be more of the America that we want to be. Nicole, I stepped briefly on your line earlier. You, you see this as a patriotic act? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course it is. Um, this isn't saying that this is a country that needs to be destroyed. This is not saying that this is a country that's illegitimate. It's saying that this was a country founded on ideals that were not true at the time, but that black Americans believed in those ideals and have worked to make those ideals true for all groups. I don't see what is more patriotic than that. Well, you couldn't have expected this reaction, which is huge, by the way. Congrats. Thank you so much. Congrats and bravo to you. Tomorrow on CBS This Morning, our national correspondent, Jerika Duncan, will take us to the site where the first enslaved Africans arrived in English North America. And she'll introduce us to a family with a very special connection to that historic period. Okay, so I appreciate Nicole for sharing and thanks for watching. So now we're going to uh, show the timeline uh, for, once again, some 18 different uh, ancient and also more so, um, I want to say yesteryear. Uh, tablets, scrolls, uh, text, you name it, that went into the King James Project, um, so uh, the Bible Projects, rather. So it's um, 18 of them, and I want to just scroll them again. I introduced them the other in the other video, but I'm going to scroll them once again because I want to make sure that it's um, something that you're aware of and you're able to get this information. We're going to go over them at a later time. I don't want to really do it at this time, but we're going to go over them at a, a later time where we're going to actually go through each of the different types of, um, you know, text, ancient text and the like, and then we're just going to kind of see what it was able to contribute. Really good information, lots of um, magic, mysticism, uh, metaphysics, uh, definitely occult science, um, you know, and and I just want to make sure that you're on board with this. So, again, this is Bible Magic Maven. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Also, ring the bell so you can get some uh, updates on when I'm going to use some more information. All right. Let's take care of ourselves, and we'll see you later. Hi there. I'm Jay. Um... I'm a writer and I go by the name of Jay, J-A-E. Um, I, I have some work I want to do. It's very, very uh, true to who I am, true to what my walk has been, my life, how I grew up, um, and the influences that I've had in my life. So I'm excited about bringing this out and uh, doing this work. So I just want to kind of go on record that it's starting tonight on Independence Day as we all know it. And I just want to make sure that I'm going on record to kind of bring this out. So um, it's, it's a story about myself, Jay, um, why I left the church, why I left my church home and what I know as church home 
and what I grew up in since the age of five. Yes, since five years old, I um, partook in um, being a part of the religious movement of Pentecostalism and um, Church of God in Christ or Kojic and uh, since the age of five and I've had some changes that have been happening in my life that have happened in my life and all that has, has basically been turned around for me. I have studied for long hours and hours and hours and hours and hours about what I found out about what I grew up believing and knowing and I'm going to be sharing that. Um, we're going to be actually doing Bible study, believe it or not, but not the type of Bible study that you might think uh, of. So it's going to be very different. It's going to be very uh, enlightening, I hope. It was enlightening for me. So hopefully you'll get into it with me. We're going to get right to it. So um, more to come. Peace. <laughs>